Welcome to another word in your attic, where we this time we uh, we make contact with a friend of the pod, author, and uh, we like to call her the Countess of Essex. Hello, <laughs> Zoe. How? Hello, Zoe. Hello, hello, chaps. It's lovely. Greetings. To see you. Are you actually in your attic? It looks like you are. Are you in yes. some kind of, uh, you know, uh, fun-filled loft? That is exactly where I am. I'm in the Hell fun-filled loft. Uh, this little corner is where I uh, I do sort of artwork and stuff like that. So that's why it's a sort of a bit of bit of chaos, really. But it's creative chaos, I like to think. So you you are actually in Essex. We that's not just in our dreams. You are actually in Essex. <laughs> It is a beautiful dream, but it is also reality. I am uh, in the Thames Estuary area, sort of feel-good country, as some may call it. Uh, and I'm, I, I look out over the, uh, over the beautiful estuary. We're very, very lucky. Can you see the mighty Canby Island, about, yes. about which you have written many times? <laughs> <laughs> would you like to see Canby yes. Island? Yes, well, if, if it can <laughs> oh, be done. We would. <laughs> we would. Can you take us on a little tour? I am. Oh, oh, in fact, first of all, there's someone lurking in the corner. Can you see... Oh, yeah. Oh. That looks like drummer Dylan Howe. It is. With it is. headphones on. That's right. I no, should explain, yes. viewers, that's, that's Zoe's husband. The mighty no, down, Dylan ladies, Howe. Please. Drummer oh, of the Blockheads. Drummer of Wilco Johnson. Drummer of all sorts of things. Oh, look at the... What's that? Is that the sea? We that is the estuary. So we're looking towards South End Pier and Sheerness over on the North Kent coast. And this way is Canby Island. Oh. Fantastic. Can you see it? That's brilliant. brilliant. It's so lovely, isn't it? So yeah, well, yes. it, it is on a day like this, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's it's fat back into the dark with us. But it's uh, yeah, it's That's gorgeous. gorgeous. It's really very uh, yeah. We feel very lucky to be uh, looking out on that during lockdown. That's for sure. That looks like uh, there's loads of opportunities to bang your head in that in that <laughs> loft. Yes, <Are> the... <laughs> I actually have uh, what they call in the building trade. A bump cap. Uh, uh, is that oh, what it's called? Fantastic. Put it on. Put it on. I so would that's sit a, on. That's, that's, that's the kind of combination of a hard hat and a, and a, and a baseball cap. <laughs> yeah, it saved my bonds many a time, I can tell you. Do you know, I think I might invest in one of those because I'm, I'm up in my loft and it's, you know, if you nut yourself on, the, on these uh, roofs, you, you really know about it. <laughs> you do. Village you people do. Will, have ki would have killed for one of those. <laughs> it's just, it's slightly camp. <laughs> yes. It is. A very high viz. Yeah. Yeah. Very Definitely. Yeah. So you got a bit, you got a bit of show and tell for us, Zoe. What have you got? What have you, got, what have you brought out? Well, I've got all sorts of, of goodies, but... Um, Record wise, I'm going to start with this very special album uh, up here, which oh, the clanking of percussion instruments. Um, right. right, this is. I'm going to take it out. Hang on. Okay, that's unfamiliar to me. Go I on. don't La recognize that. Laughing at the pieces. Oh, yeah. right. Who's Doctor it by? Doctor and the Medics. Doctor and the Medics. Doctor and the Medics. That's fantastic. I was obsessed with Doctor and the Medics when I was uh, about five or six years old. When I was <laughs> seven, this came out in 1986, I'd have been seven. Um, and because my dad, the reason this was in my possession. It was a DJ, was wasn't he? Age, he was, a, yes, he had a rock show on local radio and he used to bring home all sorts of goodies. And he very kindly sort of let me rummage through. And I, I loved records and I, he was very kind. Uh, he let me have an old record player in my bedroom and... This was my favourite. I fell in love with uh, Doctor and the Medics. Um, wanted to be one of these two, the Anadin brothers. Um, oh, they were really? very cool, amazing, very charismatic, sort of backing singers, characters. And I just used to spend all my time dancing to Doctor and the Medics in my bedroom and enjoying songs like Watermelon Runaway or The Smallness of the Mustard Pot. It's like the, 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 <laughs> the titles were just so <laughs> weird and whimsical. Um, and, I, and I wrote to them because I loved them so much and they wrote back and sent me a goodie pack and proclaimed me officially their youngest fan. Oh, that's very sweet. What did the goodie pack contain? Can you, you probably still got it actually. Well, I, I think it's some, it must be in my mum and dad's, my mum and dad's attic, but um, it was questionnaires, fascinating facts about the various medics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <like we're, laughs> <laughs> do my research on them. Uh, badges, uh, galore signed photographs. Um, and I remember when it arrived, I was off school and I wasn't very well. Uh, and it arrived and it, I was so excited that I threw up. <laughs> that very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been thrilled. Very. I think they would have approved. Yeah, yeah. And of course, in later years, um, 
I interviewed the doctor himself, Dr. Reverend Clive Jackson, um, much to my excitement because he was involved in the story of the Jesus and Mary chain and he used to uh, run a club called Alice in Wonderland uh, in Soho in the 80s and they did one of their early gigs there which I, I think was appropriately chaotic and dis probably quite disastrous by all accounts but I actually got to meet the doctor. Right, very right, very good. You got a copy of television's marquee moon behind oh, this, you. This, this, uh, it's surely a, a convenient connection to the fact that you wrote a, a novel called Shine On Marquee Moon, oh, which is a brilliant, which is a brilliant title for a book. And I've read it, and it's terrific. Thank you, Mark. That's very kind of you. Uh, yes, it's a very special album. Um, I feel like it's sort of got magic powers, this album. It's um it's sort of, you know, television, we know them as a punk band, but this is not a punk album. It's not a, I mean, I don't even know if you can give it a label, really. It's, it's just this beautiful transcendent music. Do you know the, do you know the interesting uh, uh, comparison? Uh, I, was, I was looking recently at Nick Kent's original review of Marquee Moon in the NME. And so when was it? 77? 77. No, I don't think. Well, I can't 77. remember. Seventy-seven. Yeah, seventy-seven. Was it seventy-seven? Okay, and and he actually the uh, the thing he draws a parallel with is Fairport Convention's Sailor's Life from Unhalf Bricking, which you is a really interesting point because he says that the antecedents of Marky e. Moon are not punk at all. They're kind of San Francisco psychedelia and Fairport Convention and folk, Those folk music. Folk music. Really uh, that's perfect i love a sailor's life it's it, that is absolutely an incredible song it's an extraordinary record mm. and they that's, did it first time didn't they yeah i think it danny was danny time. kelly and i think danny baker have this competition i think to see who can own the most copies of marquee moon because oh. they think it is the just and quite rightly one of the greatest records ever made i think danny kelly's got something like 17 copies well no, every he time he sees one in a, in, a, in, a, in a record shop he buys it well he, he told, must give it to somebody he told me this that uh i because i i spoke to him for my book a fabulous creation about the lp actually and they, i think it's quoted in in the book because I'd heard this, that Danny had a load of copies of Marquee <laughs> Moon. And he said, yeah, what he used to do is when, when it came out on CD, nobody wanted the vinyl. So all this stuff just went into charity shops. Oh. And so every time you went into a charity shop, there would be like three copies of Marquee Moon. And he'd buy all of them. He'd take them home like, oh, you know, <laughs> lost dogs or whatever. You know. <laughs> and, and then he would give them to people, you know. So he, he had a stock of uh, copies of Marquee Moon, which went up and down according to availability. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. There can be no greater gift than a copy of Marquee Moon on vinyl. And is, there, all, is there also a group where more of the celebrity is, is around one record and hardly anything on the others you know what i mean yeah that's i mean nobody ever holds up a copy of television's adventure no does it's a lovely record as well but it's yeah there's something about marky moon it's so like, it's like i tell you a lot of it's that cover yeah it's just the it was the definitive statement wasn't it you sort of didn't need to add anything to that you know yeah no, it it was so intellectuals yeah pale and interesting yeah, yeah. interesting yes, yeah. yes i could prove of that definitely i, I only emerge after after sundown as well. <laughs> <laughs> i might have guessed by my rubbing life. garlic at people and <laughs> yeah thrusting else, uh, steaks yeah. through hearts yeah what else you got there zoe <laughs> okay well um this is um a oh new... can't go oh, wrong what a great cover my can't god go that's wrong. Beautiful. It's, yeah no it's 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 like sort of pop art isn't it or it's, it's um it is a compilation but it's uh, it's just a record i've had very long time as you can tell by the state of it but very well loved um and the reason i picked this one out was um because when i was really young i suppose i was probably about sort of nine or ten i started listening to, again this was in my dad's collection i think and um uh listening to working in the coal mine really inspired me and made me want to play the drums and percussion because just the rhythms that they were using and it sounded like they were using things that weren't drums or percussion they were they sounded like kind of well tools i suppose you know and it just i just thought i, I was addicted to it and you know it just sort of sent me down a bit of a lee dorsey rabbit hole um but definitely started me uh, playing drums and percussion, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's a special one, old Lee Dorsey. Because the great drummer on the Lee Dorsey records was, I think I'm right in saying, uh, Joseph Modelisti of the, of the Meters. Of the Meters, yes. No, you're right. Because they were there with the house band on, you know, all the, all the records that Alan Toussaint made with Lee, Lee Dorsey, all of which are impeccable. So what else you got there? 
Right, well, record-wise, I couldn't actually find the first single I ever bought, but I will right. tell you what it is, and it was... Uh, Gone. I'm not ashamed to say that it was uh, Falco's Rock Me Amadeus. Oh, oh right. Yeah. Gosh, that's original. That's a rare, that's a rare For some reason, Austrian. I, thought, I can remember reading an interview with you, and I think you went on about the Toy Dolls version of Nelly the Elephant, which your dad bought back for you. So I was rather that, expecting you would yes. have dug that up. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't know where that's gone, actually. But you're right, Nelly the Elephant, that was... Big moment. Yeah, I treasure Played a lot on the Annie Nightingale Request show. It became a huge hit. Yeah. <laughs> go back John, to that one, go on. Didn't John Peel used to play Nelly the Elephant at festivals? Yes, he did. I think he did. Yeah. I think he found it was one of the things that united the, the entire crowd. Everybody liked Nell and the Elephant. It's a brilliant yeah. record. It lifted the spirits when it was raining. In fact, somebody should be playing it now, actually. Oh, Nationally. Yeah. Internationally. Let's bring it back, <laughs> Bring Mark. back the toy dolls <laughs> during it's, lockdown. It's never gone away. It's all no. there on... Uh, no, you know. it's always there. I it's think always there. The, the uniting thing about that song is the... Yeah. It's, it's very uh, enlivening. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we should, we should bring back a, sort of a bit of a Toy Dolls Fest, maybe. So, so Rock Me Amadeus by Falco, that is one of Austria's rare contributions to the rich fabric of, con of contemporary popular music, isn't it? Yes, yes absolutely. And uh, some fabulous, it was a wonderful music video, as I recall, lots of uh, amazing uh, syrups in that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was all very kind of, Mozart, obviously, and a very good B-side called Urban Tropical, which I thought was terribly exotic, and uh, and I listened to it and, and felt very sophisticated and European. Right, 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 right. So, what are you doing with yourself during these um, these strange times? Um, I am well. I'm I'm sort of enjoying the, the the chance to kind of pause and reflect a little bit. I'm trying. I'm not kind of one of those people who's going right. I'm going to learn. Japanese and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm 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 sort of meditating a lot. I'm I'm relying on the three M's Go on. which is Go on. meditation, moggy bothering, which right. other words is cuddling my cat, and minder. Uh, I watch a lot of Minder. That's how I pass <laughs> lockdown. There's at least two on a day on ITV four. Oh, is that one. where they are? Yes, ITV yes. four. Okay. What yeah. time are they on? Well, there's one on how you see they toy with you a little bit because sometimes they're on at nine ten, sometimes nine forty. You've got to, you know, keep you on, keep your, you toes. on your toes. Yeah. <laughs> it's having on our toes, as they would say. <coughs> um, three, four. So you suddenly think, God, minders on, I have to go and grab the cat and yes. just <laughs> and meditate furiously <laughs> while watching it. Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but it is it is an extraordinary thing, isn't it, minder? But it really kind of shaped the nation, didn't it? Yeah. In a lot of ways. Oh, it changed yeah. the way people talked. Didn't the vernacular it, you know? is, is, just, is, is, it's fabulous. Absolutely. And it's very, I suppose it's very feel good. You know, when I was doing research for the, for the Lee Brillo book, you know, a lot of the way they were talking, you know, or like the, the big figure would say, you know, certain little kind of phrases and sentences. So when I, when I watch Minder, it really kind of puts me in that kind of feel good state of mind, you know, the slightly kind of almost sort of Dickensian kind of uh, phraseology. Surely that's where Ur indoors comes from, isn't it? Minder. Do you think that's where that started? People, I think it was. I'd never heard it before. And, and now people use it, have used it ever since, you know, her yeah, indoors. I didn't realise that. Because apparently after yeah, George Cole and uh, Dennis Waterman tr uh, did, a, did a single called What Are We Going to Get Her Indoors? Do you remember that? Oh, no, I don't know that. Actually, I do remember it, yeah. Do you? I, I've never yeah. heard it. What's it like? Because no, all right, but Dennis Waterman had, I think, frustrated, frustrated rock singer. Doesn't he doesn't he sing all the uh, sing tunes on virtually everything he's he's on, doesn't he? I, I think. <laughs> yeah, that. And he did have a big hit in the seventies. I'm sure he did. Well, he's, they certainly released the Mind a theme tune. Um, yeah. Be so good for you, um, which is obviously a classic. No, that did uh, well. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I can only stick with the Dennis Waterman years on Minder. Uh, I can't go beyond that. I'm, what, I'm was, sure. what was the name of the guy who replaced him? Because he God. moved on, didn't he? And they, there was a guy called Gary something, I think. And it was like never that. quite the same. You well, can't. You can't step into the uh, into the shoes of Dennis Waterman in the middle of a thing like that. Very but, true. But it really shaped the nation's view of a whole kind of underworld, and a whole um, 
you know, nobody ever bought a second-hand car after mine. Did. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> it ruins that whole market. No, not off, not off a guy in a parking lot, you know, go, <laughs> who stepped out of a caravan to deal with you. That's you right, know. a tyre kicker. A tire, wearing, yeah. <laughs> wearing, a, wearing a camel hair coat with a cigar, looking perpetually slightly worried, didn't he, George Cole? <laughs> Always oh. looked as if he was about to, somebody was about to feel his velvety as collar. If the law were about to catch <laughs> up with him. Now, what was the name of the, sorry, because somebody was reminiscing about this the other day on, on, on social media. What was the name of the, um, the policeman who used to haunt him? Ch Chisholm. Mr. Chisholm. Oh, yeah. Mr. Yes. Chisholm. My favourite character, Patrick Malahide. He's an amazing actor. <laughs> He's so fantastic and just brilliant and just constantly menacing and sort of just gliding about like a sort of serpent. <laughs> It's brilliant. I just, I love it. And I think also, I mean, the acting's great. The script is great, but also it takes you back, I suppose, especially at these strange times, it takes you back to a pre-coronavirus and then some era where you get to see kind of old, you know, London in the 70s and the, the old cars and just, just, you get to sort of transport yourself to another, another time, which is, you know, and, and, and it's just, there's a warmth about Minder. Um, no, there is. You know, true. there's a warmth and a wit that uh, I can quite happily just live inside for a bit so it's, it's minder moggy bothering and meditation yes yeah those are the three m's right through quarantine okay and, and do you go out for walks and things like that not very often because although it's really tempting and it's so beautiful out there um we live in a block of flats uh where with the communal kind of hall and there's a lot oh, of I see. Yeah, I see. Makes you a bit nervous about um about going out at all really about leaving the flat so i've been doing um sort of doing exercise on youtube and just looking at the view from the balcony and, and very rarely going out at all. But, but how about you? Are you, you going out and walking and exercising? Uh, I, I, the, the other, actually yesterday, I went out for a walk at half past five in the morning. That's a good idea. Which I do recommend, actually. And then the sun was starting to come up, you know, so, and so I stayed out for quite a while because there were, although there were some people going to work, I couldn't work out. Uh, well, they can't all be, uh, you know. Gag around here is... Workers. The gag around here is that whenever we see a, a completely empty space, you know, I say to my wife, gosh, it's like Piccadilly Circus around here. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, I, know. Yeah. I know. But no, we, we go out for a bit, but then in the evenings, it's, it's comfort. It's like your equivalent of mine, and we watch black and white movies. You know, nothing challenging. Nobody, mm. surely, is anybody watching Eraserhead right now? I <laughs> doubt it. I wouldn't. My, no, my, we're, watching, we're watching things like the Lavender Hill Mob. We the Lavender that. Hill Mob, can't go wrong. Watch, watch the other day. The other one I would recommend, we ought to give a few recommendations, actually, because these yeah. are on the BBC iPlayer, I think, at the yeah. moment. School for Scoundrels. Oh, well, we watched that. Starring yeah. Ian Carmichael, Dennis Price, Terry Terribly Thomas. Terribly funny. God. Absolutely brilliant. And also, which I'd never seen before, which is also on the BBC iPlay, which is not black and white, is the 1974 film of Swallows and Amazons. Oh. Have you ever seen that? No. And I knew nothing of Swallows and Amazons. It's an absolutely fantastic, very heartwarming uh, film that takes you back to an era that probably never existed, never <laughs> happened at all, you know. But it's all there. It's all there. And the love in the hill mall. It's and just so exciting to see uh, the outside world, even via films, and see people together congregating. Yeah. Yeah. Crap! It's strange. You see, oh my God, they just shook I'm hands. What are you doing? Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it is strange, isn't it? But it's, it is a lovely opportunity to kind of, you know, just to reconnect with all these things and, and watch stuff that you, you think oh i haven't had time to see that or reread books i love rereading books that's such a oh, right that's a good idea yeah yeah again that's typical because that's it's rereading as you're going back to books that you found comforting mm. so it's the same with the movies isn't it yes absolutely and there's always something you missed the first time around uh that pops up to you or you're in a different headspace when you you know so different things kind of come out in relief I so you, you're not writing any books at the moment then sort of tinkering with some ideas um and and so but but you know it's quite hard to focus uh i think a lot of people are finding that at the moment so i'm just sort of going to let that be you know write things down as they come uh just sort of nurture a few ideas and 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 you know use the time to kind of also I'll tell you what else i'm doing so i'm listening this is to remind me i'm listening to a lot of clad right radio all oh, right, That's go on. Magnet that they very kindly sent. Glad right radio. Oh, right. They are fabulous. They are. Who are they? Another thing I wanted to do. I thought I I just want to listen to music from the twenties and thirties, 
a million miles away from you know where we are right now you know this is music that's 100 years old they, they just play music from the 20s 30s and 40s uh, they're a lovely uh, internet radio station based in new york and um and they even even the adverts they play are 1920s 1930s oh really oh, that's you fantastic. can just completely be in a, a different time and space <laughs> um, and it, and the music is so kind of uplifting it's it's really it's it's more uplifting than a maiden form bra i would say and that's <laughs> not a reference to an advert that there was it just maiden form bras you know very uplifting um what are the so adverts for then for sort of cocktail shakers and uh, <laughs> plus fours and garters and you get, you get a, a lot of groups like sort of um you know red bobo and his bobby likes and you know like just amazing band names which you know just lovely and and there was a song that came up the other day called make yourself a happiness pie which i thought was so sweet and i thought I, yes we need Perfect. a happiness pie it's been an anxiety salad recently but I, a happiness yeah. pie <laughs> and is we need a we second need. helping of it too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from the trolley, sir? Yes, please. A very large portion of your fine happiness pie. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to go off and make that lunch, I think, now, if we've got the appropriate ingredients. So it's been delightful talking to you. And Terrific. You too. And we, sh we shall hope to reconnect in the real world when this whole bloody war is over. Mm, yes, I look forward to that. But lovely to see you, chaps, and thank you for having me. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Zoe. Bye. Lovely to see you. Cheers. Yeah.